This week we are doing the blood typing lab. And in this lab exercise, you're going to be testing four samples of synthetic blood to determine the blood type for that synthetic blood. If you're interested in typing your own blood, Amazon does sell blood typing kits where you can actually poke your own finger if you don't know your own blood type and you can do an actual blood type test at home. So this is really good practice if you ever want to actually really type your own blood at home. That way you get some practice before you really do the real thing. Okay, let's start with just a quick review of what we're testing for. So there are two separate categories of markers that we're testing for on our red blood cells. There is the ABO blood group and there's also the RH factor. Let's start with ABO blood group. If you recall from your patterns of inheritance lectures, there are two possible types of marker that you could have on your red blood cell. And, and you either have one or the other, both or none. So if you're type A blood, that means that you have a type A marker on your red blood cells. And that type A marker is actually referred to as an antigen because if someone who doesn't have this marker receives that blood with the type A marker, it causes an immune response. That person has antibodies against type A antigens because that is not recognized as self by the immune system. Similarly, if you have type A blood, that means you have the type A marker, you recognize B as being foreign and you have antibodies against type B. Similarly, if you have type B blood, means you have the type B marker on your red blood cells and you have antibodies against type A. If you are AB, that means you have both the A marker and the B marker. So one of your genes is saying make type A markers and one is saying make type B, so you make both. And this is codominance. Both alleles are expressed. You don't recognize anyone's blood as being foreign, so you don't make any antibodies against A or B because you recognize A as being self and B as being self. You, so you have both A and B antigens. If you're type O, it doesn't mean you don't have any markers on your red blood cells. It means you don't have type A or type B. So you actually make antibodies against both, which means you can't receive type A or type B or AB blood because you have antibodies against both. What this also means is if you did receive the wrong type of blood, something called agglutination would occur because those antibodies would bind to the antigen on the surface of the red blood cell. This is the RH marker. It is a separate marker. And this pattern of inheritance is just complete dominance. RH positive is completely dominant over RH negative. So if you even have just one of your two genes saying make the RH positive marker, then you're going to be RH positive. So you're going to make the RH marker if you even just have one of your chromosomes telling you to do that. RH negative means both of your genes say don't make the marker. And positive is completely dominant over negative. So if you're RH negative, you don't have the RH marker. If you're RH positive, you do. This is a cool figure because it shows you both types of marker together. So if you're A positive, you have the type A and the RH factor. If you're A negative, you just have the type A antigen, you don't have the RH factor. Okay, same for B positive. B positive, you have the B and the RH. B negative, you just have the type B antigen. O positive, you have the RH factor, okay, but you don't have the type A or the type B. And then finally, AB, if you're AB positive, you have all three. So you have the, the type A, the type B, and the RH factor. AB negative, you just have the A and B. This is a picture of a test kit that's a little bit different from yours, but it, it does have the exact same three anti-serums. And then you only have four synthetic bloods and you just have one test tray. What this means is after each type of blood that you test, after each of these samples is tested, you must thoroughly clean your test tray and your toothpicks each time. You cannot have any trace of the prior blood sample 
or the antiserums in your test tray. So make sure you clean them very, very well after each test that you run. You also want to make sure that you use the corresponding colors of toothpicks. So the anti-A serum is blue. You will use a blue toothpick in the A well. The anti-B serum is yellow. You will use the yellow toothpick in the type B well. And then finally, the RH factor is white or clear, and you will use the white toothpick for that. So this is what your test well looks like. And for each of the tests that you're going to run, you're going to follow the same procedure. First thing you're going to do is you're going to set up your test well with the anti-serums in each of the appropriate wells. So the anti-A serum, one drop is going to go in the, the top well that's labeled A. Okay, then one drop of the anti-B goes in this well. And then one drop of the anti-RH goes in this well. Okay, then you add your blood sample and you mix with the appropriate color of toothpick and you are looking for agglutination. What that will look like is it starts to clump. So if this was our test that we ran, you can see that there was no clumping in the A or the RH, but there was clumping in the B. That means that the anti-B serum reacted with and binded, <laughs> bound, what's the correct word? It attached to a type B antigen. So that means type B antigen was present on this blood sample, on the cells in this blood sample, and therefore agglutination occurred. There wasn't a type A antigen present and there wasn't an RH antigen present. So no agglutination occurred here. That means this person's blood would be B negative. If all three had clumped, that would be AB positive. If none of them clumped, it would be O negative. So if you have any questions about that, be sure to ask your instructor. I want to just talk for a second about this data table that's in your lab. So the lab questions are pretty basic. You are going to take pictures of all four of your results. So please do not forget to take a picture before you rinse out your tray each time because you might not have enough um, of the anti-serum or the blood sample to run it again. So be sure to take a picture before you rinse each time. So you're just submitting the four pictures and then you're completing this data table. This data table is asking you to put a plus or minus in these first three columns and then in this column to record the blood type. So let's say that in our test well, we did have clumping here. So we're going to put positive. Okay, we didn't have clumping here, so we're going to put negative. You could also write out positive or negative if you wanted. Okay, let's say here we did have clumping, so we'll call this positive. So this would be A positive blood. So here we would write A positive. Let's say we had negative, negative, the minus sign doesn't really show up very well, does it? Negative. That would make this O negative. So that's how you'll record your results. Okay, if you have any questions, be sure to ask your instructor. Thanks.